It's London, 1814, and one of the strangest events in British history is about to occur. The setting is the St. Giles Rockery, a dated term for a slum full of criminals, whores, and the poor. St. Giles itself traced its origins to the 12th century, where it served as a leper colony founded by Queen Matilda, and it always retained a malicious character, even being the starting point of the 1665 Great Plague of London. There was a significant Catholic Irish population living there, earning it such epithets as Little Ireland or the Holy Land. By 1814, St. Giles was said to be one of the worst slums in Britain, with abysmal living conditions, overcrowded by the misfortune of society, living amidst gin shops, prostitutes' hovels, and secret alleyways that even the police didn't go near. Just ahead of New Street, an area within the rookery, sat the Horseshoe Brewery, a major producer of porter, an old type of beer native to London, and its most popular alcoholic beverage. For his beer, Sir Henry Mew, the owner of the brewery, had a 22-foot-tall vat constructed, capable of holding 2.9 million litres, that was reinforced with iron hoops. The horseshoe was very popular for those living within St. Giles, but none of them could expect what would unfold on the 17th of October. In the afternoon of that day, George Crick, a clerk at the horseshoe, noticed one of the iron bands around the vat had come loose. The large vat contained 581,000 litres of porter, weighing around 33 tonnes. However, bands slipped off regularly, two to three times a year, so Crick was not too concerned. When he informed his supervisor, he was assured that nothing bad would come of it, and it would be fixed later. An hour later, Swiftly and suddenly, the vat burst. The force of the release knocked into another vat whose contents also began pouring out. The rear wall of the horseshoe was decimated by a 25-foot wave of porter. Another 15-foot wave swept into New Street, destroying two homes. In one of these, a girl was having tea with her mother and another child. Once the wave swept over, Hannah, the young girl, was killed. In the second destroyed house, a wake was being held by an Irish family for a two-year-old boy. Anne, his mother, and four other mourners were killed. Eleanor Cooper, a 14-year-old servant of the Tavistock Arms in Great Russell Street, was buried under the brewery's collapsed wall while washing pots in the pub's yard. Another child, Sarah Bates, was found dead in another house in New Street. With insufficient drainage, the beer flowed into cellars, many of which were inhabited, and people were forced to climb on furniture to avoid drowning. Those in the horseshoe survived, though three workmen had to be rescued from rubble. The end result of the flood was a scene of desolation, equal to that of a fire or an earthquake. There were stories of people drinking beer from the flood and death from alcohol poisoning, though these stories may be false. The mourners killed in the cellar were given their own wake, and other bodies were laid out in a nearby yard by their families. The public came to see them and donated money for their funerals. After a coroner's inquest was held for the following victims, the verdict of the inquest was an act of God, meaning Mew and Co, Sir Henry Mew's company, were not liable and wouldn't pay compensation. The company ended up having to petition to Parliament to avoid bankruptcy. The Horseshoe Brewery went back into business soon afterwards, until 1921, when Mew moved their production to the Nine Elms in Wandsworth. The brewery was demolished the following year, and the Dominion Theatre was later built on the site, and Mew and Co. later went into liquidation in 1961.